now we're going to understand one topic that how to update RTM in quality center. Yes, guys, you can update RTM also in quality center. So what is RTM? It is requirement traceability matrix. That means we will check whether for all the requirements, we have written the test cases or not. In simple words, whether all the requirements are covered or not. We can do it from two modules. First from requirement module and second from test plan module. Requirement module is something on which BA will be working, but it will be updated from here as well as from test plan. First, we will understand if as a tester, we want to update RTM, how we can do that. So you will go to test plan. After going to test plan, you will go to your test case Let's say this is my first test case, which I've written for cancel requirement. So this particular test case, I have written for cancel button requirement. So I will choose this test case. What I'm gonna do right now, guys, I'm gonna update my test case against the requirement written for it in the requirement module. So what is RTM? In RTM, you write down requirement ID, requirement description, then you write down the test cases and their execution status. So here we do have requirements. We do have test cases. We do have execution status also, but it is not connected with each other. Requirements are there in the requirement module. Test cases are there in the test case module and execution status is updated in the test lab module. All three are in different modules. Now how I'm gonna update it with respect to the particular requirement that this is the test case I have written and this is the execution status. I'm again repeating, we are understanding how to update RTM. So we will go to the test plan module. This test case I've written for cancel button requirement. If you see this panel over here, guys, we have details. We understand what is details. We have design steps. We do have requirement coverage too. Requirement coverage means that which requirement is covered by this test case? Which requirement is covered by this test case? If you click on requirement coverage, you will see grid like this. Now where the requirement is written? Requirement is written in requirement module. So what I'm gonna do, I'll click on this option over here, which is select requirement. So when we click on this requirement, select requirements, you will see that requirement tree will open on this side. This is your requirement module in which BA have written all the requirements. So when you expand this, you will see your module name. Again, expand the module and you will see the requirements. I have written only two requirements in this. So my first requirement is cancel button. And this test case is for this requirement. It's pretty simple. You will click on this requirement and you will send it to this side with this arrow mark over here. So whenever you will click on this arrow mark, this requirement will be transferred to this particular grid. So when you will click on this, see requirement is transferred here. So now this requirement is attached to this test case. That means for this requirement, we have written this particular test case. So this is how you can update your test case with the requirement. Now we have mapped the requirement with the test case. After this, if you go to your requirement module, I'm going to expand that, expand this login. Look at this, guys. Cancel button, instead of not covered, it is written passed. Why? Because we have connected the test case with it. And now QC has picked complete options for it. First of all, the test case. Second, it's execution status. So execution status is passed because we have already executed this test case in the test lab and we updated its status as passed. So whenever you will map your test case ID with the requirements, its status gonna be picked automatically. And that's why it is coming as passed. So if you want to check it, we can click on it. And here, this is my requirement from requirement module I'm telling you. And this is my requirement. If you go to test coverage, guys, in my test plan, I had a module called requirement coverage. In my requirement module, I have a module called test coverage, vice versa. In test plan, requirement coverage. In requirement, test coverage. So both are same. So if I click on this, look at this. 
login underscore tc1 underscore cancel button is connected to it and the status is passed. When we mapped our test case with the requirement, it happened both sides. In your requirement module also it is updated and in your test plan module, anyhow you did it, at that time also it is updated with the execution status. So if you are mapping your requirement with the test case, it will be mapped with respect to the test case ID as well as the execution status if you have executed the test case. If you haven't executed the test case, it will come as no run. But if you have executed a test case, whatever the status came, it will be updated automatically in front of the requirement. So this is RTM. This is how you can map your requirement and the test case. So now guys, we understood how to map requirements from test plan. But let's say if you are in a requirement module, you can map your test cases from here also. So from your test plan, you mapped requirement. From requirements, you can map test cases. We already understood how to map requirements with the test cases when you are in test plan. Now we will understand how to map requirements with your test cases from requirement module. As a tester, we will be using test plan, but BAs can also check it with requirement module. So we have options from both sides. Let's say with agent name, I want to associate one test case. So this is my requirement. I will double click on it. Whenever you will double click on your requirement, this window will open. And in this window, you will see on the side, all the options for this requirement. Details of the requirements, test coverage, link defects. Yes, from here, you can link defects also with the requirement. Attachments, history, if any, if there is any changes or if you already have worked on this requirement will come in history. So here, when you will click on test coverage, you will see test plan tree. And if you expand it, this is the test case I have written for this requirement. Again, you will send it to this side. You will click on OK and see it is automatically updated from here also. Now we will understand how to map multiple test cases with the requirement. So let's say we go to test plan. You can do it from both sides, from requirements as well as test plan. I'm showing you how we do it from test plan. So this is my third test case. I want to map this third case, test case with the agent name requirement because I've written this test case for agent name. So valid agent name was also for agent name and invalid agent name test case is also for the requirement called agent name. So what I will be doing is again, guys, you will go to requirement coverage, choose the things here. You can click on the requirement and send it to this side. Same ways, the way you have attached your requirement with the test case previously, same ways you will be attaching the requirement with the other test case also. But now how it gonna impact my requirements? Let's see that. When you will refresh it, see it's showing you failed. Earlier it was passed and now it is showing you failed. Why it is showing you failed? Because I have linked two test cases with it. One test case, which was for valid agent name passed and another test case, which was for invalid agent name, its status execution status is failed. So if even a single failed test case is there, Overall test case direct coverage status gonna be failed. If even a single test case is failed, then coverage status gonna be failed. If you open it, now you'll go to test coverage and you can see two test cases are linked with my requirement. So two test cases are linked with my requirement. Same way as three test cases can be linked, four test cases. And look at this coverage chart over here. 50% passed and 50% failed. That means one test case is fast and another test case is failed. Let's say if you attach the fourth requirement also, fourth test case also with it, and we know the four test cases also fail, then again it will change that maximum of the test cases are failed in it and only one test case was passed. So BA has this chart over here. When BA opens it and he can see, okay, so this particular requirement, mostly it is failed. So he can have his idea that mostly this requirement is failing. Then developer has to definitely fix. Guys, this helps. Actually, this helps BA to understand when we go to the DTM. Now, otherwise how BA will understand what's going on. In DTM, as we say, it's BA's decision to take the final call. 
but how BA will come to know whether this requirement, how it is working or not. So there is transparency among different modules. So this is how you can map multiple test cases with the requirement. So let's say now I have to link defect with the test case or link defect with the requirements, because if it is linked with the test case, it will be automatically linked with the requirements. So defect module also can be associated with the test case. So how we do it? Let's say I click on the defect. Main thing you need to look for the defect ID. Let's say defect ID 11, I want to associate it with my test case that is enter invalid agent name. I mean, when I'm checking invalid agent name, I'm getting this defect. So I want to link this defect with my test case. So how we do it? First of all, we will go to the defect module and we will read the defect ID. So I want to associate defect ID 11 with my test case. How I do it? I'll go to test plan because here I have written the test cases. I'll go to test plan and if you see here, with requirement coverage, you have option called linked defects. I can click on link defects and here you can add it from here. Add existing or if you want to add and create at the same time, this is add and create. But here add existing, that means you can link the existing one. For that, click on this. See, it is asking you defect ID. And if you remember, we just noted down the defect ID from defect module and it was 11. So I will write down, okay, defect ID is 11 and I want to link it. See, defect ID 11 and the summary is error message is not same as expected. This is my test case and this is the status whether it is failed or it is passed. So this is how you can link your defect also with your test cases. Once the defect is linked with your test case, it will be updated in the requirement module also after refreshing it. Now we will understand how to generate report. So in order to generate report, you have this option called dashboard where all the reports will be stored. Now, what is reports guys? So whatsoever you have done till now, as you know, is monitored, tracked, and you can use it for the reporting. Let's say today we have wrote the test cases and we have executed the test cases, we have logged defects. So I can generate reports of all the modules because QC ALM is tracking everything, is monitoring everything. Let's say today I have written the test cases. I've written test cases in test plan and every tab. So I'll go to test plan. There is an analysis tab over there. So analysis tab is for the report generation. You can go to any module. Let's say today I've executed the test cases. So I'll go to test lab because here I've executed the test cases. Here also you have analysis tab. You log the defect, you have analysis tab. So analysis tab is everywhere with all the modules. Requirements, analysis, test plan, analysis, test lab, analysis. So analysis tab is to generate reports for your activities. So first I'm going to generate reports for test planning. So I'll go to test plan, go to analysis. See here, first option is reports. I can click on standard test planning report. So we'll click on that and see, this is the report we're going to get. So here you will get the complete report, what we have done till now. So what are the test cases you have written? Everything will be there in this report. So this is the report we'll get. You can save the report and you can send it to your lead or senior tester, whosoever is asking for the report. Now you have this option of print report. You have this option of save report. But if you see, we have two save. One is this save and another is here, save a report. So why two options are there to saving it? So guys, one of the option is to save on your operating system. And one option is there to save your report on the QC. So in QC, if you want to save this report, you can go to the save. So let's say I'm clicking on it. When I click on that save, I got two options, public and private. Public means, it will be stored in the QC ALM and 
whosoever will log in can see this report. Private means it will be stored in QCLM, but only you can see this report. So both of the options are there. 